Hey folks, it's James. It's day five of the 12 days of Procreate, and that means it's time to talk about color, or should I say adjusting color? Because unlike some other apps, Procreate allows you to retroactively adjust any color you choose. So you never have to throw out a rendered plan or elevation because you started with the wrong color or waste time agonizing over what color to use with one you already chose. So get out your iPad, tap the link in the description below to download the free assets that come with this video, and get ready to learn how simply by using and playing with Procreate, you will become better at working with color than you ever thought possible. So let's talk about color now. And here's the color icon. And if we tap that, it opens up all the palettes. And the first thing to notice is that hopefully your Procreate for Architects palette is right at the top. But all the other palettes you may have already begun are probably going to be arranged below. Now, if they're not, if you have to move it around, just tap on the name bar of the palette and then you can move it around anywhere. Just tap and hold until you see the shadow. And then you can move it around just like you would drawings in the gallery. Now, the other thing is if Procreate for Architects palette is not your default palette, if it's down here, say, then you can set this as default by tapping there. And now what that means is that won't change the location. It won't change the position of that palette. But when you open up the palette colors again, you'll see that that palette is now at the top. However, your other palettes will still be up above it. So depending on how you like to organize your colors, I generally like to have the default palette all the way up top. So I'll go back to Procreate for Architects palette now, set it as my default, then I'll tap and hold and move it up to the very top so I'm in good shape. And the second thing I'd like to say about palettes while we're in this mode of looking at all the palettes is that you can also switch to what's called cards and see these beautiful samples, these beautiful cards showing you the colors in each palette. This is my Procreate for Architects palette. Here's the next palette down in the menu. And then here's the next palette down in the menu. And I would like to change that. So I'll go back to compact reading of the palettes and I'll tap and hold on my UCLA class and I'll raise that back up in case we need that. So there again are the two basic ways to see palettes in compact mode seeing the colors small and all of the palettes listed very easily to find. And then in cards where the colors are bigger and more beautiful and probably make your choice easier, but you'd have to scroll through to find the different palettes you've used. Now, the next thing to notice about palettes is if I return here to my compact palette mode, you'll notice that across the bottom are all these different ways that you can look at palettes. So if we go from right to left, you'll see that we can tap on value. And this really gets down into the weeds where you can adjust any of the uh, hue, saturation, and brightness or the RGB scale. And I don't use that very often, if ever. But there is one feature here where if you have a specific color that you've been wanting to use, you can enter the hexadecimal number here and simply program it by tapping and deleting it and adding the new color information. Now, this is not something I do often, so I'm going to press done and just go back to the default. Now, the next palette is the Harmony palette. And this is a beautiful thing because if you, it's more advanced, but if we pick, say, this, one of these blues, how about this uh, blue here? Then up here, you'll see that Procreate is calculating the exact color wheel for, in this case, a tetradic color wheel, meaning the color is divided into four equal divisions. Or I can switch to the more famous triadic color wheel, where yellow, blue, and red are the three poles of the color field. And by simply tapping any of these circles in here, I can get the exact complementary color to the original color I picked. So if I go back and pick a different, let's say I pick this brighter red, then Triadic will find the three complementary colors based on that red. And simply by tapping here, I can make those colors become the active color. So the real value of this, I suppose, is 
for artists or people that are looking for achieving maximum color effects where uh, contrasting colors are important. And it's just a great way to learn about color, but it's not something that I use every day, I must say. And here again, uh, within that, you can choose straight complementary, which is literally the opposite of that color all the way across the color wheel. And again, I can pick any color here and you'll see the opposite, exact chromatic opposite of that color across the color wheel. And that's useful for creating maximum optic vibration if you're into that thing as an artist. But for most of us, for architects, not completely necessary. So we'll move on from the harmony mode to the classic mode. And classic mode, I suppose, is a bit more useful to architects, although there's still a lot of sliders here to adjust. But it's basically the same thing as happens when you bring up the adjustments menu and you get a hue, saturation, and brightness slider. So that's classic color picking. And again, if I can change any of the colors here that are in the Procreate for Palette, Procreate for Architects palette, I'll just tap on those and I get the classic color sliders for that. And the final one is the disc. And this is one that I often use because it's very quick access to a color that you have in mind. If you've got a specific color that you need and it's not already in your classic palette, your basic palette here, then it's one of the easier ways is to find that color here. So for instance, let's say I need a green for a tree and I'm not really sure where it is, but I, I can easily move around this inner circle until I get something very dark and, and rich for that green. So that's the easiest way to do that. And of course, once you've finished that, you can move that color, whatever color is selected up here, can be inserted into one of these palettes by simply tapping. And I'll go down to this third palette and I'll simply tap in one of these empty gray squares and that green color will come down. So that'll become the active color. And of course, this active color indicator simply reflects what you tap on in any of these palettes. So you can see it changing and wherever you end up will be the color that is preloaded and ready to go when you start drawing. To watch the next video in this series, tap the image you see here, and I'll see you in the next lesson.